Well, hi everyone. I'm David Mile, and this is the third in a series of talks about what I'm calling the piping life cycle. Uh, and in this short session, we're going to talk about the actual physical fabrication uh, of the piping. So we've covered the two earlier stages, and you can go back and view those uh, videos if you like. But we, so we talked about how we uh, generate information in the 3D piping model, and how we pass that on to work preparation. Uh, and we've emphasized the idea of the importance of data, of being able to pass data through these various stages, and how in each stage we maybe add some information, we generate some additional data and some additional documents, and then we pass that on uh, to subsequent stages. So we're now actually in the pipe fabrication shop, and our job is essentially to make these spools. Uh, and here we have a typical spool drawing. And as you can see, it's a pretty typical pipe spool. It's got a section of pipe, a, an elbow, uh, a flange, uh, a number of welds. And the information behind this drawing is going to help us manage all these different operations that we have to do. So, for example, since we have a piece of pipe, we're going to need to cut a standard pipe down to the size necessary for that. And of course, since we're doing, we're, we're possibly creating tens of thousands of these spools, you know, we, we, we've got to figure out what particular length of pipe we need to cut uh, to satisfy the overall requirement. But for this spool, uh, we need a pipe. <clears throat> and we need to cut that down to length. Uh, we need to bevel the ends in preparation for welding. Uh, in this case, we don't need to do any bending, but we might need to do that. But we need to make sure that this elbow is available. We have that material. Uh, we've got another short piece of pipe, and we've got a flange. So we have everything in here. We know we need to make three welds. We know what types of weld they are. We know uh, what two components are being welded together. We're going to deal with situations where perhaps this drawing is not clear, and we need to send uh, a query back to our engineering company, who is our customer. And unfortunately, we also know that it's realistic that they're going to send us a whole lot of changes uh, continually through this process. And we have to manage that. And what we do may depend on how far through the fabrication process that we've got. There's a whole series of uh, operations as we get into welding. We need to prepare for welding, the fit-up process. We need to understand what uh, pre- or post-weld heat treatment is necessary. And that information has all been derived during this work preparation stage. So, you know, along with this drawing, we've got some other documents that tell us uh, what testing is required. We need to do particular surface preparation and cleaning and painting. So this, if you like, is our uh, instruction to make this particular spool. All sorts of issues follow. You know, in this particular example, we need to make sure that the elbow and the uh, flange are available for the, uh, for the spool to be fabricated. So availability of material is a big issue uh, and that can tell us you know, what particular spools we need to make. Uh, we can record, once we actually physically weld, we need to record things like heat numbers and material certificates uh, for the particular pipe. And this is all about being auditable and traceable. We need to test. So the number of welds and the type of test we need to do has been determined for us, but uh, we actually have to carry out those tests to record the result. We probably want to track uh, information about each weld, who, when the weld was made, who made it, uh, what qualifications they had at the time, the results of the test. So we can see across the project and across the, uh, the company the standard of performance that we're meeting. We need to report on progress to our customer because he needs to know uh, where this spool is in the shop. Um, I mean, for example, sometimes it happens that the construction people need this spool and they may be prepared to take it before it's completely finished painting, uh, bring it to site because they, it's going to hold up construction otherwise. So being transparent and being able to report information on status is a key part of, uh, of, of what we have to do. 
uh, we receive and uh, create a whole series of transmittals with our customers upstream and, and downstream, i.e. construction, to tell and inform them uh, of the uh, status of each of these spools. Essentially our job is to take this spool through the pipe fabrication shop, uh, put it on the back of the truck and deliver it to the construction site. So in the final one of our videos, <coughs> we'll look at what happens to this uh, pipe spool and the other uh, operations that, that are needed when we actually get to site. So we'll see you in that video. Thank you. Thank you.